China has landed a vehicle on the far side of the moon for the first time in history. The success of such an extraordinary mission. For thousands of years, we've only seen one side of the moon. The same craters, the same dark spots, the same face staring back at us every single night. We thought both sides were basically the same. Just rock and dust and dead volcanoes. We were completely wrong. China just landed a robot on the hidden side of the moon. The side that never faces Earth. The side no country has ever touched. The mission is seen as an important step as China develops its space program. They drilled into the dirt, scooped up rocks and brought them back. And what they found is shocking. Evidence that the moon was once an ocean of fire. A wonder material that shouldn't exist in nature water hiding in plain sight, and enough energy sitting in the dirt to power Earth for thousands of years. The moon doesn't have one face. It has two completely different faces, and they're nothing alike. China just saw what's been hiding on the dark side. Here's what they discovered. The impossible landing. But landing on the far side of the moon isn't just difficult. It's supposed to be impossible. The moon is tidally locked which means it spins at the exact same speed it orbits Earth. Because of this, it always shows us the same face. Always. The far side is always blocked, always hidden, always facing away from us. And that creates a massive problem. Radio waves travel in straight lines. They can't bend around corners. So if you send a robot to the far side of the moon, the moon itself blocks your signal. You can't talk to the robot. You can't steer it. You can't tell it what to do. Total radio silence. That's why NASA never went there. Why the Soviet Union never went there. It's a communication dead zone. And without communication, you're flying blind. But China figured out a solution. In 2018, they launched a satellite called Kuekiao and parked it in a special gravity pocket on the far side of the moon called a halo orbit. This satellite doesn't orbit Earth and it doesn't orbit the moon. It hangs in a balanced point between the two, staying in position using almost no fuel. From there, it acts like a mirror, bouncing radio signals over the moon's shoulder. One side faces Earth, the other side faces the far side of the moon. It's a communication bridge floating in space. With this relay satellite in place, China launched Chang'e 6 in May 2024. On June 2nd, it touched down in the South Pole Aitken Basin, the largest, deepest, and oldest impact crater on the moon. This isn't just a big hole. It's 1,500 miles wide and five miles deep. The impact that created it nearly broke the moon in half billions of years ago. The descent was terrifying. For 15 minutes, the lander was completely on its own, using artificial intelligence to dodge boulders and craters in real time. There was no joystick, no human pilot, just the robot making split-second decisions to avoid crashing. But it stuck the landing. The robot extended a drill, dug into the ancient soil, and scooped up samples from a place no human has ever been. Then it launched back into orbit, transferred the samples to a return capsule, and sent them flying back to Earth. 53 days after landing, a small capsule dropped out of the sky, and landed in Inner Mongolia with four pounds of moon rocks inside. When scientists opened it, the first thing they noticed was the color. The two-faced mystery. Look up at the moon tonight and you'll see dark spots scattered across its face. We call them Maria, which is Latin for seas. But they're not water, they're giant oceans of frozen lava. Billions of years ago, massive volcanoes erupted on the near side of the moon and flooded huge areas with black basalt. The lava cooled and hardened, creating those dark patches we see from Earth. But here's the weird part. The far side of the moon has almost zero dark spots. It's white, rugged, and covered in craters stacked on top of craters. No lava floods, no volcanic seas, just ancient battered rock. Why did one side melt and the other side stay frozen solid? This is called the lunar dichotomy, and it's the biggest mystery in lunar science. For decades, scientists had theories but no proof. The Chang'e 6 samples just gave us the answer. It has to do with a radioactive cocktail. Scientists call it CREEP, which stands for potassium, rare earth elements, and phosphorus. These chemicals are radioactive, which means they produce heat a lot of heat. 
Think of them like a planetary electric blanket buried under the surface. When scientists analyzed the Apollo samples that astronauts brought back from the near side in the 1960s and 70s, they found those rocks were packed with creep. The landing on Thursday morning comes about two years after the successful Chang'e 3 mission, the first soft landing on the moon since 1976. The near side was hot on the inside, but the Chang'e 6 samples from the far side, almost no creep, clean, cold, frozen. This confirms something wild. The moon is lopsided on the inside. Billions of years ago, when the moon was still forming, all the radioactive elements somehow concentrated on one side, the near side facing Earth. Those radioactive elements cooked the crust from below, heating it up and thinning it out over time. With a thinner crust, magma from deep inside could punch through to the surface, and volcanoes erupted for billions of years, flooding the land with lava. The far side, without that internal heater, cooled down fast. It developed a crust that's maybe 20 miles thicker than the near side. And that thick crust acted like a lid. The lava couldn't break through. So while the near side glowed with rivers of molten rock, the far side stayed a cold, white wasteland. The moon isn't one world, it's two worlds glued together. But the chemistry gets even stranger. Imagine taking a pencil. The lead inside is made of graphite, which is just layers of carbon stacked on top of each other. Now imagine peeling off a single atomic layer of that graphite with a piece of tape. That impossibly thin layer is called graphene. Graphene is a wonder material. It's 200 times stronger than steel. It conducts electricity better than copper. It's transparent. It's flexible. On Earth, we make it in high-tech labs using lasers, chemicals, and extreme precision. It doesn't just form naturally, or so we thought. Chinese scientists analyzed the Chang'e 6 soil under powerful electron microscopes and found natural graphene flakes sitting in the moon dust. These flakes were just two to seven atoms thick, perfectly formed sheets of carbon. How does a high-tech supermaterial end up forming naturally on a dead rock in space? The answer is violent. The moon has no atmosphere, no protection from space. It's constantly being bombarded by meteorites, some the size of grains of sand, others the size of cars. When a meteorite slams into the surface, it creates insane pressure and heat for just a split second. That impact shock compresses carbon molecules in the soil instantly, fusing them together into perfect hexagonal sheets of graphene. The moon is essentially a giant factory, hammering carbon into graphene using asteroid impacts as the tool. And this matters, because if we ever build a permanent base on the moon, we won't have to ship construction materials from Earth. We can harvest them directly from the dirt. Super strong building materials for habitats. Conductive wires for electronics. All sitting right there in the soil. The lunar surface isn't just dust. It's a resource. But graphene wasn't the only discovery that rewrote the textbooks. Chang'e 6 also confirmed the most violent chapter in the moon's history. Chang'e Force mission, taking detailed measurement of the moon's terrain and mineral composition. The global magma ocean. Scientists believe that about 4.5 billion years ago, a Mars-sized planet named Theia smashed into the baby Earth in a catastrophic collision. The impact was so violent that it blasted enormous chunks of Earth's crust into orbit, and those chunks eventually clumped together to form the moon. If that theory is true, then the baby moon wasn't solid. It was entirely liquid, a gigantic ball of molten rock floating in space, glowing red hot against the blackness. As the moon slowly cooled over millions of years, crystals began to form in the molten soup. Heavy crystals like iron and magnesium sank toward the center. Light crystals like aluminum and calcium floated to the top and hardened into the crust. This process is called differentiation, and it's how planets separate into layers. Until now, this was just a theory based on computer models and educated guesses. But Chang'e 6 proved it. The samples contain a mineral called anorthosite, a light-colored rock made mostly of aluminum and calcium. Anorthosite can only form by floating to the top of a magma ocean and cooling there. You can't make it any other way. This confirms that the entire moon was once a single sloshing ocean of lava stretching from pole to pole. The moon isn't a captured asteroid that wandered too close to Earth. 
It's the child of a violent collision made from pieces of Earth that were melted and reformed in space. And because the South Pole Aitken Basin is so incredibly deep, five miles down, the impact that created it punched straight through the crust and exposed the mantle, the deep, rocky interior of the moon. On Earth, we've never been able to drill down to the mantle. The deepest hole ever dug only reached about seven miles, and Earth's crust is much thicker than that. But on the moon, a massive asteroid did the drilling for us. The Chang'e 6 samples contain minerals called pyroxene and olivine, heavy green crystals that belong deep underground in the mantle. Finding them sitting on the surface is like finding gold nuggets washed up on a beach. It shouldn't be there, but it is, because the impact dragged it up from the depths. This gives scientists the first ever direct look at the inside of another world. We're not just looking at the moon's skin anymore, we're looking at its organs. The hidden resources. But the most shocking discovery was something nobody expected to find. Water. For decades, we were taught that the moon is bone dry. Apollo astronauts brought back dust drier than the driest desert on Earth. No water, nothing. But China's missions shattered that idea. In the Chang'e 6 samples, scientists found a new mineral called ULM1, a hydrated salt with water molecules chemically bonded inside. This isn't ice hiding in a crater. This is water locked in rocks sitting in direct sunlight. And there could be 270 billion tons of it globally, trapped in minerals across the lunar surface. Where did it come from? Meteorites. The samples contained fragments of carbonaceous chondrites, rare space rocks rich in water. For billions of years, the moon has been pelted by these water bombs, and with no wind or rain to wash them away, they're still there, mixed into the soil. This changes everything. If water is everywhere, locked in rocks, we can extract it anywhere. We don't need hidden ice deposits. We can just bake the rocks and collect the steam. The moon isn't a desert. It's a sponge. But water isn't just in minerals. It's also in glass. When meteorites hit, the impact melts rock instantly. Droplets cool in mid-air and turn into tiny glass beads. The lunar soil is full of them, and these beads are packed with water. The sun blasts the moon with hydrogen. That hydrogen bonds with oxygen in the glass to form water. The glass acts like a storage tank. Scientists estimate these beads alone could hold enough water to fill Lake Tahoe. And it's easy to extract. Just heat the beads and the water steams out. We don't need to haul water from Earth. We just need a vacuum cleaner and a microwave. But there's something else in that soil worth trillions of dollars. Helium-3. Helium-3 is a rare isotope that could power nuclear fusion reactors without radioactive waste. Clean, infinite energy. Earth has almost none because our magnetic field blocks it. But the moon's been soaking it up from the sun for four billion years. The Chang'e samples confirmed it. Scientists found a new mineral called Changesite Y, a clear crystal with helium-3 inside. This is the first new lunar mineral discovered by China and only the sixth ever found by humanity. China has publicly stated they're interested in mining the moon. They're not just there for science, they're there for resources. Although a latecomer to space exploration, China is quickly catching up and is posing a challenge to the traditional powerhouses in the space arena. Estimates suggest 100 tons of helium-3 could power Earth for a year. The moon has roughly 1 million tons. That's thousands of years of energy sitting in the dirt. If extracted efficiently, the moon becomes the most valuable real estate in the solar system. And there's one more discovery. Apollo samples told us the moon's volcanoes died 3 billion years ago. But Chang'e 5 samples from 2020 were only 2 billion years old. The moon stayed active a billion years longer than we thought. The Chang'e 6 samples from the far side are older, about 2.8 billion years. The far side cooled first and died early. But the near side, heated by radioactive creep, stayed warm and active much longer. One half erupting with fire, the other frozen in silence. That was the moon for a billion years. The race for the moon. So what is China planning to do with all this knowledge? They're not just publishing research papers. They're building a map, a resource map. They know where the water is. They know where the building materials are. They know where the energy is hiding. And they're getting ready to go back. China has announced the International Lunar Research Station, 
or ILRS. It's a plan to build a permanent base on the Moon's South Pole by the 2030s. Not a small outpost. A real base where people can live and work for months at a time. And by landing on the far side, China has proven they can operate in the most difficult, isolated and dangerous places on the Moon. The far side landing wasn't just a publicity stunt. It was a survey mission. They were checking out the backyard to see if it's a good place to build. The answer is yes. The Chinese probe makes history by landing on the far side of the moon. The Chang'e 4's mission was launched in early December. While NASA focuses on sending astronauts back to the moon with the Artemis program, China is focused on sustainability. They're figuring out how to live off the land, how to extract water from the soil, how to build habitats from local materials, and how to generate power without shipping fuel from Earth. But China isn't the only one looking at the map. The United States is looking at the exact same spots. NASA has identified 13 potential landing sites for the Artemis 3 mission, which plans to land astronauts on the moon sometime in the late 2020s. And when you compare NASA's list with China's target zones, they're almost identical. Specifically, everyone wants Shackleton Crater. Why? Because it's perfect. Shackleton Crater sits right at the South Pole. It has high ridges that get near constant sunlight, which means solar panels can generate power almost 24-7. And it has deep valleys that are permanently shadowed and filled with massive deposits of water ice. It's the ultimate piece of lunar real estate. It's like finding an oasis in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Whoever controls that oasis controls the entire desert. China plans to launch Chang'e 7 in 2026, and Chang'e 8 in 2028 to survey the South Pole and map the water ice deposits in detail. NASA plans to land astronauts around the same time. We're heading for a celestial traffic jam. Unlike the space race of the 1960s where countries planted a flag, took some photos and went home, this time we're building houses. And there are only a few good spots to build. The discovery of water trapped in glass beads and minerals might relieve some of the pressure. If we can extract water anywhere on the moon, maybe we don't desperately need Shackleton Crater. Maybe there's enough room for everyone. But the race is on. And right now, it's neck and neck. The moon is not what we thought it was. For decades, we treated it like a dusty attic. We climbed up there, looked around, grabbed a few souvenirs and left. We assumed both sides were the same. We assumed it was dead and useless. But China dusted off the old books and opened the windows. They found a world of duality, fire and ice. A world coated in wonder materials like graphene. A world filled with hidden water just waiting to be extracted. They found that the far side isn't just a boring twin of the near side. It's a completely different geological animal with its own history and its own secrets. And most importantly, they found that the moon is useful. It's not just a rock to look at. It's a factory. It's a mine. It's a gas station floating in space. The space race is back on. But this time, the finish line isn't a flag planted in the dirt. It's a factory, a power plant, and a permanent settlement. And right now, China has the best samples sitting in their labs. So what do you think? Are you excited about mining the moon? Or do you think we should leave it alone? And what about that graphene? Could that be the key to building permanent moon bases? Let us know in the comments. We read every single one. If you enjoyed this trip to the dark side of the moon, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's coming next. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.